Okay, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, tonight I bring you some of the strange cat reports that come into the UK. Now, many UK residents have been attacked by large cats, police have confirmed. Most people in the UK have seen I know of someone who has seen a large cat wandering our fields and woodlands for well over four decades now. Around 17,000 reports were made in Staffordshire alone between 2010 and 2018. Lately, you can stick a pin in the map and there will be a report of one or many large cats roaming the area. Even in my hometown, Bolton, there are 22 reports. From the Surrey Puma to the Beast of Skerry, they come in all colours and are usually described as larger than a large dog. So your average Brit would not be too surprised to hear of a large cat report close to home. What may surprise them is the number of reported attacks on humans or humans out walking with their dogs. Listed as some of those reports in the witness's own words. I have added the original source for each story so you can view um, the original newspaper article. Dog attack by panther before the owner has terrifying encounter with a big cat in Cornwall. Police and the RSPCA have confirmed they attended the scene of an attack which happened near Callington. Police investigators took a plaster cast of a paw print, which they say the charity is confirmed as that of a big cat. James Stevenson, whose dog was attacked by the cat, said people needed to be aware because it could take a child next and he has recounted his own harrowing experience with the animal. The big black cat is said to be stark in a Cornish village where several pet cats have disappeared and one dog has been left bleeding from its injuries and with claw marks on its shoulder. A local farmer has also apparently discovered its den on his land. James, who lives with his mother Trisha in the village near Callington, said he was in his garden with Marley and his collie puppy Maisie when the beast struck. Over the last couple of weeks, we have seen this large black cat walking down the back wall of the field at the back of our garden, he said. It's on a stone wall, often carrying something the size of a lamb with it. Whatever it's been carrying is about a foot off the ground, so it's very big. We've not paid it much attention because they normally shy away from humans. We're not sure whether it's a puma or a panther, but it's been confirmed that it's a big cat. We're under the impression that it's a puma. We went round to warn the neighbours to keep any dogs in and keep them safe. They think it's a panther. Now, they normally only come out at night so as not to blow the cover, but this one is out any time of the day because it's adapted to its surroundings. It got our attention most when we were out in the garden last Thursday night, he said. Marley is a rescue dog, so he now has almost an acre of garden when before he lived in a combined space. He loves his garden. He walks around to make sure it's safe and secure every night. It's his routine to make sure him and his family are safe. He was walking the far end of the garden and I was about 20 feet from him. And he was suddenly taken down to the floor as if his legs had given away from underneath him, like he was pulled down. He's a very agile dog and very careful. I thought he tripped on something and hurt himself. I called him back and he was already beside me with his tail between his legs in fear. He was covered in blood. He had big deep gash on his front left leg and one between his toes. And on his left shoulder was a big black claw mark as if a muddy claw had scraped down the side of him. He's still not interested in going out in the garden at night. He loves his garden and he now can't bear it. The RSPCA said the cat had probably already caught something and was eating it in our garden, and that's why it didn't take Marley. It was just protecting its food when it took him down. He said that when his mum first saw it, she called the police, who advised her to contact the RSPCA as it wasn't a police matter. But when the family contacted the RSPCA after Marley was attacked, officers from the Devon and Cornwall police arrived and confirmed something had been here which should not have been. Now there was a further incident on the property. A little over a week later, James, an engineer said, but the past few nights we noticed large footprints down the end of the garden. Now, the animals don't want to go out. 
On Saturday night, I went out to the garden with the dogs and I had a big torch and we've had to resort to putting big floodlights up to scare it off. I saw two large green eyes reflecting in the torchlight at the bottom of the garden. You're told to make yourself appear big and aggressive and scare it off. So I shouted at it and was waving my arms around and it actually started to run towards me. Now that's very unusual for a big cat. So it's obviously adapting to its environment very well. They say you should never turn away or turn your back on a large cat and you should never approach it. I was luckily enough that I was close to the door so I could get back inside easily when it was coming at me. And then I didn't see it again. Now the dogs were still being strange. It's not afraid of humans like they normally are. Now there was a fair distance between us and it should have turned and run away, but it didn't. It was very scary. We have automatic lights on the front of the house and and then notice them go on. Now the dogs are still unsettled. Now he's appealing for locals to keep their pets inside and children safe and see if they have any CCT footage of the animal. And he added that a local farmer had found a pile of wood chippings and logs and other items which indicates a site where the animal has set up a nest or den in an area of undisturbed woodland. A police spokesman said, police have received a single report of a big cat sighting in the Callington area. We were called in on the morning of Friday the 29th of March by a resident of the property in near Harrow Barrow, who claimed that the panther had been in their garden and attacked their dog um, the night prior and was later seen with another animal in its mouth. An officer attended the property and located the footprints in the garden. We called the RSPCA for advice and took a cast of the print, which they confirmed was the pad of a large cat. Over the years, there have been a number of similar reports across Devon and Cornwall. Now, police hunt a mystery cat after a woman aged 74 is wounded in an attack. A woman mauled by a big cat in the Highlands fears the animal could seriously harm a child if it remains free. Pat McLeod, 74, needed stitches in deep wounds on her leg and she also suffered other cuts and scratches on her hands after being attacked. Police and wildlife experts are trying to track down the cat and have warned people not to approach it if they see it. Mrs McLeod from Alness claims to have been attacked twice by the creature, the latest being last week. Of her first encounter, she said, a very large animal came bounding out of the shadows It leapt at me, gripping my leg. There were punches from its sharp teeth and scratches. I was knocked over by the propulsion of the beast and I thought, how do I get rid of this animal? I pulled over the dustbin for protection and the animal came over the top, gripping my left leg and the top of my right arm. I swear it was frenzied. It was spitting and growling. I would say from nose to tip of its tail, it was about four feet long. She also said the grey cat had a dark stripe down its back, a long tail, large paws and a broader face than a domestic cat. She added, I am not a weakling, but my God, if it attacks a child, I can't bear to think what the outcome might be. After the attack, she went to Invergarden Hospital for treatment and she was still in bandages when attacked again several days later by the same animal. On that occasion, the cat leapt at her and grabbed her leg. It quickly ran her off. Now, there have been thousands of big cat sightings in Scotland over the years. Uh, I think even Ray Mears himself, um, a well-known survivalist in the UK, has reported seeing wild cats in the Scottish Highlands. Um, other people make claims of panthers, leopards, pumas and lynx. All have been seen. Now, Scotland does, does still have some wild cats, and it is not beyond the doubt of possibility that when many of the animals were released back in the 70s, they could have interbred with some of our native wild cats. Now, an 11-year-old boy was left with five long claw marks on his face after being attacked by a young tiger-like animal as he played near his home. Joshua Hopkins recovered from his encounter with the animal yesterday. Police urged the public to be vigilant. 
Joshua was with his brother in a field a hundred yards from his home in Trelch in Monmouthshire when the animal took a swipe at his face. A police helicopter with a heat-seeking devices scanned the area yesterday. Now, unusually large cats had previously been sighted in the region, but the police said it was the first time an attack had been reported. At a press conference organised by the police, Joshua said, At first I thought it was playing and I didn't really mind, but when it stuck its paw at me and I saw blood flying past my face, I thought I was going to die. Joshua came across the animal after following a black tail, which he thought belonged to his own cat, into the grass on Wednesday. He said, I saw a big black tail and I thought it was Sylvester, but then it jumped up and it slashed me in my face and tried to pull my head into its mouth. Chief Inspector Nigel Russell said that the local zoos had been asked to check whether any animals of a similar type had escaped. And he said, it's a bit of a concern to us that a young child has been attacked. We have had sightings before in this area, but this is the first known attack. If it's a juvenile, there may be parents out there somewhere. A big cat expert, Danny Ninehan, who is helping the police investigation, said he believed that the cat was a five foot long juvenile tiger like animal. I actually took a report myself in Cornwall of three lion like creatures that came down um, one side of the embankment and crossed the road in front of a gentleman and his wife and then carried on across and down into the fields. Um, I think that was about four years ago, and they were described as golden like lions. Now, a big cat sighting and panther like animal attacks a man in Cornwall. Matthew Wiles, 30, says he was visiting his girlfriend when he saw the six foot beeline banging against the frame. He says he went to shut the windows, but he claims that the cat suddenly reappeared and swiped at him. He said the animal looked like a domestic cat crossed with a panther, and he fears the Big cat may be breeding with the local moggies in Port Leave and Cornwall. Matt said it was very intent on getting in the window. It was trying to get through the window to get to me. I thought it'd gone and I went to shut the window and it went to get me. It grabbed my hand through the window. I used to work with animals and this thing was like nothing I'd ever seen. It was worse than anything on telly. Matt, a martial arts fan from Helston, Cornwall, said he was lucky to have very tough skin, else the cat would have drawn blood, he continued. If it was standing on the floor, it would be reaching about six feet. Now, a big cat sighting, a panther-like animal, attacks a man in Cornwall. Uh, I think that's the same one. Just one second, i just get rid of this. There's a repeat. Um, that's a minute. There we go, right, sorry about that. Was a hotel worker scarred by a big bat? Big cat, oh, sorry, oh dear. Nick Bowden has little recollection of the encounter near to Tarn House Wood between Coniston and Hawkshead. And he was only persuaded to visit the village chemist after colleagues told him of the Gazette's recent stories on large cat sightings. Now, the incident unfolded when a, the 26-year-old who works at the Queen's Head in Hawkshead felt something hit him as he walked home from a friend's house in the pitch black. Now, 30 minutes later, he woke up with a deep five-inch gouge on his left shoulder and what appears to be four claw marks on the forearm. I know it's all a bit far-fetched, but it seems very mysterious and not beyond the realms of possibility, said Mr Bowden who is originally from Rochdale. I know the woods quite well, so I have no problem walking them in the dark. All I really remember was being hit from my right, and because I smacked my head when I fell, it was all a bit hazy after that. It wasn't until I got back to Hawkshead that I realised how bad it was. Bal Edwards, the joint owner of the inn and restaurant, said, I was very concerned for him. I looked at his injuries and asked him, how on earth did you get those? There's plenty of deer out there to keep wildcats alive. And when I walk my dogs, I'll be looking over my shoulder from now on. Mr Bowden sustained the injuries in the early hours of Thursday morning. And it wasn't until he arrived home that he realised the extent of his injuries. He went into work on Friday and was told by colleagues of the Gazette story a fortnight ago about an apparent sighting of a large cat 
close to where Mr. Bowden was when he was attacked. He visited the chemist in Hawkside where he was told he should have had stitches and was given some saline solution to help the wound heal. Everyone who's seen the scars has suggested I was attacked by a wild animal, he explained. I left it off at first until one of my colleagues pointed out the Gazette story on the wildcat spotted in between Coniston and Hawkshead. Very close to where the incident happened and very close to the time that you reported a wildcat being spotted in the area. I am still covered in these scars, some of which will probably be permanent. But I just thought this is highly coincidental considering that a lot of scars I have could have been caused by a large cat. Now, I remember my parents coming, uh, they were staying at Basin Thwaite Lake in uh, Cumbria, and there was a walled garden there on the farm, um, and my dad said it had rained quite badly the night before, and they actually discovered, my dad was into his big cat, so he knew about pug marks and things like that, and a pug mark is the print of a cat, and he found some distinct, pug marks um, that he said would have probably come from an animal that was around five feet in length um, and they did take some photographs actually of them but unfortunately you've got two people um, almost in their 80s with a Motorola flip phone so that didn't go very well but I did some digging in the area and I was able to find myself really and it didn't take very long 42 accounts of people that had reported either a very black puma type animal or a lighter coloured what would be described as a mountain lion type animal um, and that was after a short little bit of research and as I say they come in so often now that I think we're quite used to taking them it is not a shock to people in the UK if you tell them that you've had a big cat account many of the witnesses will say well I saw a big cat years ago but um, because the, uh, there are areas in the UK where it would be very easy to, for a large apex predator like a cat to hang out and breed. Now, panic as a huge panther is spotted in a UK park. It growled and bared its teeth. Now, I have, I, can't, I think it's over 160 accounts now that have come into me where they haven't seen the animal. It's been something within the wood that has growled at them and shadowed them in some way. Now that could be seen as cat-like behaviour, but in all honesty, from what I know about cats and what my dad used to know, cats are surprise attackers, so they don't give themselves away by growling or any of that. That's more of a canine thing. Um, a cat will stalk you very silently and then it will attack you from behind in a surprise attack. So if you are out there with your dogs, Pull your dogs close, make yourself as big as possible and do not turn your back on it. Don't run and don't walk towards it. You just walk backwards very slowly until you're a safe distance away from it and then you just leave. So all of these accounts where cats are attempting to approach human beings is very worrying because that means that they are so close to the towns and the cities that human beings are no longer a threat to them. We don't have anyone really hunting them here in the UK. We have a lot of people hunting for evidence of them, but that's entirely different. So let's go back to um, Tom Pitt, 38, who was out walking his dog in Hatfield Park, which is located on the border between Herefordshire and Essex. Uh, Tom was out when he spotted the dangerous animal in the distance. Mr Pitt, who lives, lives in Hatfield, initially thought it was a large domestic cat before approaching it only for the beast to growl and bare its teeth at him. Mr Pitt said, I was walking with my dog there, which is what I normally do. I think it was my dog who noticed it first. He kind of looked in that direction, and so I looked, and it was a big black cat. It looked like a domestic cat, but much bigger. Mr Pitt said, we made eye contact with it, and when I began to walk towards it, it looked like it growled and bared its teeth at me. It ran into the woods after that. And I think we startled it. It was all so quick. Now, Mr. Pitt said the sighting left him understandably worried. And I've been walking over there for years and I've never seen anything like it before. You don't expect to see that kind of thing. It was in the morning and I was barely awake. 
You see the deer and the hedgehogs, but not a big cat. Mr Pitt's encounter comes two days after the police in Scotland issued a warning to residents after a panther was spotted prowling the area in Ayrshire, um, and that's on the north-west coast of Scotland. Now, a very intriguing article, uh, a forensic test proved that a leopard is in the, on the loose in Lincolnshire. And many of our Lincolnshire um, friends will tell you that there is no problem with seeing a large cat in Lincolnshire. It is an ideal area for them and they do very well down there. So after years of false leads and exaggerated stories and made up claims, and this is the newspaper's uh, words, not mine, it's official. A forensic inquiry by a government accredited laboratory has confirmed for the first time that at least one big cat is living wild in Britain. I think there might be more than one. A study of hairs taken from the site in Lincolnshire has revealed they belong to an animal from the leopard family. The large black cat has been spotted frequenting an abandoned caravan in the garden of a retired couple. Sandy and Julie Richardson um, spotted the cat earlier this summer and they filmed it before calling the police. They were tempted but failed to capture the animal. Now a sample of hairs was taken from inside the caravan and passed to DNA Bioscience, a company that carries out forensic work for analysis. Rebecca Webster, the operations manager at DNA Bioscience, which is accredited by the Law Chancellor's Department, said, the core of the hair is not that of a domestic cat. The outside of the hair shows evidence of a scaling pattern that is consistent with an animal of the leopard family. It is very exciting. Miss Webster also sent a sample of the hair to another laboratory, RGJL, based in Pittsburgh in the United States, for a second opinion. Now their analysis confirmed the hair was from an animal of the genus, of the genus Panthera a subgroup of the cat family that includes lions, tigers, leopards and jaguars. Now, PC Nigel Lowne, the officer for Lincolnshire Police, said, this is concrete proof, as far as we are concerned. It is certainly the best evidence by a long way that we have had in Lincolnshire of the presence of big cats. Now, the findings follow decades of claims about mysterious large cats prowling the countryside. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Richardson encountered the la a large cat on their land. Now, the couple's four-bedroom house on the outskirts of Hemingby near Horncastle by, di uh, backs directly onto the fields, and it's a one it's one-acre garden is littered with abandoned caravans and cars. About eighteen months ago, I saw a paw print the size of a tea plate outside the back door. Said Mrs. Richardson. That was the first time we noticed anything, and I took a plaster cast of it, but it fell apart. Now, a tea plate in England is not the little saucer that you have for your tea. It's what you would eat your dinner on or your lunch on. It's a large plate. Now, in July, Mr Richardson, a 66-year-old retired plastics worker, saw a large black cat making its way down the side of the garden. A few days later, I went into the caravan at the end of the garden, looking for a new spring for my grass cutter. I turned around and there it was, sitting on a mattress, staring at me from just a few feet away. It was about four feet long, plus the head and the tail, and the size of about one and a half Labradors. It was black, with yellow orangey eyes, which were evil to look at, totally dead and soulless. It bared its big four yellow brown teeth, but didn't make a noise. Then it started to slowly walk towards me. Its body was sleek and well muscled and it kind of rippled, he said. Now a growling big cat stalked lost walkers for more than a mile at a Gloucestershire beauty spot. Seven people were stalked by a growling big cat for more than a mile and they were all adamant about what they saw. Now the panther-like creature followed the group from Woodchester Park Boathouse to the car park a distance of about 1.3 miles after they became lost. Now, one of the group contacted Gloucestershire big cat tracker Frank Tunbridge after an earlier report of what appeared to be a big cat roaming near Stroud. I have seen the big black panther, and it was a panther. It was as clear as day, the witness said. My wife, myself and my partner and about five others were walking up Woodchester Park and we got lost in the woods and we found ourselves back at the cars at about 11pm. On our way back up the drive, we saw yellow eyes in the trees 
like they were following us. There was a growl the closer we got to the car and at that point we got scared, ran to the cars and put the lights on and there it was right in front of us. It then jumped over the fence into the long grass where it seemed to be stalking us and growling. We were trying to get a picture but it was just too dark. This was only four weeks ago and again last week we saw the same eyes in the tree line deeper in by the lakes. It was not a puma as it was too small. It was black with yellow eyes and it slinked like a mo moggy. It was a big cat though. No other animal can move like it. She said she first noticed it at the boathouse and we were sat in the boat at the boathouse and it was behind us in the tree line. Uh, then at the mansion it followed us up the drive to the car park. Mr Tunbridge said the park with its wide wooded valleys will be an ideal habitat for a big cat. It was probably just seeing them off he said. He could have had cubs, who knows. There were, uh, they were there late at night and the cat would have laid low during the daytime. Now in 2009, the Forestry Commission confirmed reliable sighting of large cats, which his work has made during a deer census, using thermal imaging cameras and on two occasions in different areas in the Forest of Dean. One man from Dursley saw two large cats, one bigger than the other, at five feet and four feet long. Um, chasing a domestic cat in 2016. Now, I've taken so many sightings of large cats here at BBR. I have no doubt that they are here in the UK. It used to be something you kept to yourself for fear of ridicule. Now, it's an everyday occurrence. And I wonder if the same will happen to our other cryptid creature sightings. If you came forward in the 1970s and said that you'd seen a puma, a panther, or a leopard, or anything like that, in the UK you would have been laughed at but there are some areas in the UK now where I've had not only strange animal kills but sightings um, like Scary for instance that have gone on for over 35 40 years there are thousands and thousands of cat kills found across the UK by farmers um, and woodland workers deer sheep and small cattle with bites to the neck um either on below the throat in a choking uh, type of attack or on top of the spine um, very quickly snapped many of the bodies are dragged up into trees which is typical cat behavior um they will start on the bum end and they will go because they go in through the soft tissue so it's normally the belly or the back end and lots and lots of farmers are making those reports i think at one point there were fifteen thousand reports of cat attacks on domestic farm animals in the uk and that was in a newspaper report and you give it a google i'm sure it'll pop up i also think that some of our wild man accounts may be misidentified large cats um, and it may be the other way around that some of our strange upright i don't want to call them creatures i don't like that word strange upright hominids that we see here in the uk um could be skulking around and people just think that they're large cats there is a case that i remember I remember the witness's name um but i can't remember her husband's name she was her name was kelly I think a Kim uh, and she was out with her husband and she saw what she described as a skulking black cat but he described it as ape-like or monkeyish and there are a few reports like that um, there was even one that was by a police officer and he called it a monkey face shuck but what he described was a really large cat but with like a human type face um, like the flat faced lions that the account that i took in uh, cornwall now there are some other newspaper reports out there that do state that dna has been found i think it was only last year that uh, an animal was shot that had escaped from a zoo um and the police said that they'd taken prints down there and they confirmed there was a large cat sighting and the animal had actually been shot before they'd found the print so there must have been two out there and I think there was only one that had escaped from the zoo. Wherever you go in the UK and speak to farmers they will tell you about large cats on their land and large cats taking sheep or cattle as I said earlier you'll hear from dog walkers, wild campers, anyone that's out there in the wilds 
will tell you that they have seen a large cat and that's how prevalent they are in the UK. It was around, I think it was about 20 years ago when Dorset Post um, got so many reports that they actually now, they had an official document for you to fill in. So many people reported big cats in Dorset that it was much easier for them to just come up with the document, hand it over and you filled it in and they filed it. So I don't know if anyone has ever asked under the Freedom of Information app how many large cat reports come into the police in the UK. Yeah, it might be interesting if somebody fancies doing that. Um, but I am unsure. So I've got lots and lots and lots of large cat accounts and I will be bringing you more as we go over the months because I know some people have an interest in. And as I say, if a large apex predator can remain in an area quite happily, uh, and well, then so could any other creature. So I hope you all have a lovely week and enjoy your weekend. And until next time, thank you very much. Good night.